scanning. So there are some basic things which we should know about C programming, and we'll start with that. So what I'm saying is that you will not be able to write any program after this lecture, but you just have to hold on. You'll be patient as we go. So I'm just talking about the key concepts uh, that are, uh, should be discussed in C. So the general aspects of C, uh, C was developed in the 1970s by uh, Dennis Rich of the Bell Telephone Laboratories. It's a high level general paper structured programming language. Right, so in such as in C, the terms that we, uh, we use usually in our algebraic equations, algebraic expressions, and also English like words. So we use words like if, else, for, do, while, and so on and so on. So you realize that when you are writing your C program, you are using uh, general English expressions in your programming. And C has additional features so that it can be used at a lower level. In other words, you can program maybe your PICs, uh, microcontrollers, you can also program them using C. In other words, it has features which allow it to act between machine language and the high level languages, right? So, because of those additional features, you can use C for system programming and also for applications programming. In other words, you can write proper system uh, programs for application uh, development using C uh, programming language because of the HNL features. Then you realize that C also is a set of characters that are used. So we use uh, our letters A to Z and our numeric numbers, uh, our numeric characters 0, 1 to 9, and also those other combinations. Then we also use our special uh, symbols uh, that we find even on our, on our keyboard. We find this is most commonly used uh, special expression also. These uh, special use, you know them in mathematics, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and in any other, other characters that we have, right? So when you use uh, these uh, characters from the alphabet, the numeric characters, and the special symbols, you will start to create words that become the building blocks of our C programming language, right? And they are always sometimes known as tokens, right? So the following are different types of tokens used in C, what are called the identifiers, to explain them, keywords, constants, operators, punctuation symbols, and so on. Those are now called what? Tokens. So we find out that there are some characters and words that are used as identifiers, characters and words that are used as keywords, and so on and so on. So we have uh, basically two types of elements in C. So we have what are called user-defined uh, elements, and there are also system-defined elements, right? But when you talk about an identifier, we are just talking about a name that you give to these elements. There's a user defined functions, they can go system defined functions, and so on and so on. So, when you use a word as a programmer to name a variable, or a function, or a label, then we say we have created a, an identifier. That is basically what we are talking about. That if you use that, to name a variable function or a label, then you've created a what? An identifier. So you can create an identifier using letters and digits in any way, right? But the first character or a label should usually be a letter, 
right? Then you can have them in any other order, all right? But the first character should be a letter. You can use both uppercase and lowercase uh, identifiers when you are writing your, your C program. So well, let's look at keywords. So these are keywords which are defined in C by the system. So you cannot use these words to create your own identifier. So you cannot have the identifier called break or case or car or continue, default and the like. You cannot use this because they are reserved in the, in the language. So these are the keywords which you cannot use as an identifier or a name for a, for a variable. No matter how suitable it might be, maybe you want to write a function and you see that it's a continuation, but you can't call it continue because continue is a, a keyword, right? And also, key, uh, C programming is, is case sensitive, right? So once you write capital letter C on that continuum, it will not be uh, recognized by C as a, as a keyword. So C is case sensitive. If something is lowercase, then it should be lowercase as it is given in that table. Then when we look at a variable, a variable again is just a name that you give to a storage area so that it can be manipulated by a program, right? So if you are creating a variable, it should give a type. Once you give a type, then C will know the size of that uh, variable in terms of memory uh, allocation. It will know the type of variable in terms of memory allocation. So if he says, uh, maybe it's car, it means it's a character, C will know that this will occupy maybe one, one byte, right? Then if float, it means it also occupies more space, double will occupy more space. Then void, it means there is no type. So really that you can also use what are called void functions in C meaning to say there is no type for that uh, variable. So you can name your variable what you want, except that you cannot name your variable using those keywords. But once you give it int, then already C will allocate enough memory to contain that, okay? So in other words, when you give a name to a variable, that name, will be referencing to the memory location where that variable will be located so that when you are now using it, C can manipulate in that way. So in other words, the name that you are using is for you, but C will allocate space for that. And so when you call or make reference to your variable, C will make reference to the memory location, and then it picks the value of the variable from there. There are also uh, identifiers called constants, right? So when you declare something as a constant, it means you cannot alter it in the program, right? So if you say constant uh, double pi is about 3.14, it means now when you make reference to pi, the value will automatically be 3.17, 1, 4, I mean, okay? Then there are also integer constants, right? These do not take the fractional part of the uh, variable or the number. So if you say something is int, then it means that number will either be 3, 1, 140 or something, it will not have a comma. That is how C sees that. So 
you can also have in a decimal, hexadecimal, whatever, constant. So you give the type, then you put constant, then you give the, the value inside. Then you are fixing that value to the constant when you are writing your, your program. You can also have floating point constant. This can take the commas and the like, right? They take the fractional part of it. Then you have uh, character constants. It means it's just one character or one letter. Okay. Then string constants is a combination of more characters. Right. Then there are what are called escape sequences. In other words, there are some characters which you cannot type. So let's say you need backspace. If you put backslash B, C will, will do a backspace for that. Uh, the more you use backslash N, it will just create a new line, right? And so on and so on. Usually, this is the most you used uh, uh, escape sequence in our starting uh, programs in C. Right. Then we have what are called operators. These are symbols that can do operations on a value or a variable. For example, if you use the plus, you can use it to uh, do addition and so on and so on. So there are a lot of operators that you get in C. So the number of operators that you will know will just depend on how deep you are going in your, in your programming, right? The arithmetic operators, the plus, minus, multiply, divide, and the like, increment and decrement, that means they either increase the value by one or reduce the value by one. Then assignment operators, usually the equal sign and the like, relational operators that do comparisons, logical operators that do the Logic uh, operators are uh, the end, the or, and the like. Conditional operators, bitwise operators, and special operators. All these are types of operators that you meet in our C programs. Like I said, the depth of your knowledge in these things basically depends on how you are focused in, in knowing your C programming language. So I just want to make a note that in programming, all you need is to be able to practice, write more programs, then you can become a guru in programming. So basically, I look at programming like it's an art where the more you practice, the more you commit yourself to it, the better you become in that. Okay? Then arithmetic operators, you know, this plus minus, this is the times, this will give you the remainder after division. This will give you the value after division, but this one will just take the, the remainder. Then increment and decrementing. If you put plus plus, it means you're increasing by one. Minus minus, you're decreasing by, by one, right? So if you say plus plus A, then it means you are coming from A, then plus one, it becomes 11. Minus minus B, it becomes 100 minus one, and so on. In assignment operators, you are giving a value to a variable. So A is equal to B, it means A takes the value of, of B. You say A is equal to A plus B, it means A plus B becomes the value of A. So we are assigning this to that. So the one to the right will be assigned to the one to the left. So in other words, if you say A is equal to B, you modify the value of A and B remains unmodified. That is how we do assignment operators. Relational operators are those which do comparisons greater than, less than, not equal, and so on and so on. We, we know how to use these ones in our simple mathematics. So basically, those are the things that we have to know that they exist in our C programs. Okay, so I'll stop the recording. Then we can uh, discuss shortly before we go to the next uh, slides on our introduction.
हैं